In today's video, we're going to be talking about the marking and layout tools that I use in my shop. A few weeks ago, I had a request from a viewer to do a video on the marking and layout tools that I use. So I'm going to cover my most used, my go-to in this video. First, let me invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I really appreciate it and it helps the channel grow. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave those below and I will try to answer any questions you may have. I will also include links to these tools in the description below, all that I can find anyways. So with that said, let's get started. So let's start with the layout tools. These are T rules made by Anchor. I have a six and a 12 inch, and you can also get an 18 inch as well. They are stainless steel and etched in gray, so your, your numbers are not gonna wear off on you. You can measure and mark in inches or break it down to 16 30 seconds and 64 they are three inches wide and have a three inch ruler on the end as well, which breaks down into 30 seconds. They have an aluminum guide bar with a T-slot to quickly adjust to fit most situations. And the rule can be quickly removed to use it as a flat ruler as well. The guide bar has a small rail which perfectly aligns the rule back up when rejoining the two pieces back together. I have found these to be very accurate and easy to use and they work best with a number five pencil. Larger lead will not pass through the hose and lead any smaller than that breaks too easy just because the lead is so small it doesn't have, the, doesn't have enough strength. And even the number five will break when sliding the rule and marking at the same time. It does require just a little bit of practice using them to keep both hands and the rule, keep the pencil and the ruler both moving at the same pace. Once you get the hang of it, they work fine. I do recommend using some care with them though. You don't want to lay it down and end up throwing, throwing pitching a, a board or something or other on them, increasing the rule. Any bend in it is going to throw its accuracy off. Let me say this, none of these are, am I associated with, there's, there's no sales for them, they're, they're not sponsoring, I'm not affiliated with them in any shape, form or fashion. I got these tools because they were what I could afford and they are what I use. I have a lot of squares and tapes and everything else laying all over this shop. These are my go-to. These two I'm going to kind of cover together. Both of them are K-Pro. This one's a, a magnetic lock combination square and this one right here is a, a kind of machinist style ledge square. Uh, both of them have stainless steel blades and the engravings in them, the, the graduations on them are engraved so they're not going to wear off on you either. This one right here has a 45 on it. Of course it's got your 90, got your little ledge that you can flip, flip out. It has holes for your pen for scribing lines which are on quarter inch increments. It also has preset, which you can probably see it on that side. These This top row of hose right here are preset degree angles and they range from 10 degrees to 60 degree angles on that one. When I got this one I checked it and it was dead on square. Now it's a little bit more expensive than a lot of your uh, big box store squares but it is accurate and well worth the money. I'll put a link to those in the description. Uh, this one same thing with the blade stainless steel etched engraved. Uh, it has a magnetic lock and it is pretty strong. Strong enough that there, should, there would be no concerns with using it. But if you drop it and you have it set, say for six inches, and you bump it or you drop it, I would recheck it before using it to make sure that you haven't knocked it out. Because it's strong, but it will, depending upon how hard you hit it, it will move on you. But under general, normal use, it's not going to move. It is pretty, pretty strong. It has a level in it and has your 90 and your 45. This one, when I got it, it was not square over roughly around 10 inches, a little over 10 inches. It was off just a little bit. And I got to looking at it and down in this slot where the, the blade the rule goes into this red paint there was a little bit I don't remember if it's on the front side or the back side now but there was a little bit of red paint down in there that had like overspray or something 
and that was what was throwing it out. Took a real small shim and a piece of fine sandpaper and just got just on the on the paint and removed the paint and then when I put the rule back in it and checked it, it was dead on also. So that worked out. Next for some of your finer joinery or even setting up your tools, I've got a, I think this is benchmark. It don't say on it, but it looks like a benchmark. But it's a six inch rule and it's a T-square. Now I checked that one and it, it is very accurate also. And it has a, four different graduations on it. It has a 64th and 32nd on that side and a 16th and 8th on the reverse side. Now this one is a two inch steel machinist square. It doesn't have any markings on it other than the name, which is Groz or Groz, however you pronounce that, G-R-O-Z. Very good square and real handy, both of these are, whenever you're setting like the fence on your joiner or setting the blade on your table saw. Very handy for that, plus very handy for marking fine joinery such as dovetails and so on. Filler gauge, you can get those at just about any automotive store. Sometimes you can find them at Walmart, uh, your big box stores. Amazon, you can get those just about anywhere. Those are very handy for if you're setting the in feed and out feed table on your joiner or if you are just using a shooting board and you need just that little bit of slant in it to straighten the edge of a board up when you're shooting, shooting the end of it at a 90. Very, very handy for that. I also use a six inch rule a lot. Sometimes I'll be using this one and laying out because I can, I can just lay it on the piece and mark and move and line up. It's, it's very simple and easy to use. This one is a six inch and the very first inch of it has 32nd graduations on it and the second inch has 64th graduations on it. And then the last four inches have all 16th. And I use this one right here a lot also for elevating the back end of my hand planes when I'm sharpening them on my stone. Bevel gauges. I have had these forever and a day. I don't remember when it was exactly that I bought these. They don't have a brand on them or anything else. I've had them for a long, long time, probably 25 plus years or so. <clears throat> but you can get bevel gauges at your, uh, at your big box stores for little or nothing. They do make them in digital. I have never found a need to have a digital bevel gauge, but for marking your dovetails or transferring a, a, an angle from one piece to another one, then they, they are handy to have around and I, I use mine quite a bit. Calipers. I have a digital set and this is a general brand and I have an analog set and this one is a Husky. And they are on the cheaper end. Of course, none of this stuff is what you'd say dirt cheap, but this is the cheaper end and I've never had any issues with either one of mine for what you use calipers for. And I will say this, if you don't have a climate control shop, you may want to get you some spare batteries and have them on hand because it seems like if you let your shop get cold or even get extremely hot, the batteries will go down in that faster than they will anything else. So have you some spare batteries on hand. Now this next thing I'm gonna show you I have used this a lot. I have never used setup blocks on my table saw or a router or anything else, but these are kind of like setup blocks. And I think I actually did a video once where I was showing some tools and I use these. These are called Craig Quick Set. And they range from 1 8 inch up to 1 half inch, and there's seven. There's everything from 1 8 to 1 half in, in between. I'll use this half inch so you can see it. <clears throat> it has screw holes in it just in case you need to, to mount it to a piece. <clears throat> but it has three different measurements. You've got a half inch right here, you got a half inch up here, and you got a half inch right here. And I use these to set the depth of cut on my router table. Even handheld routers just lay it across the base plate and bring your bit right straight up to it. And you're a, you're a half inch. I set my 
uh, table saw blades when I don't need to make a through cut. If I'm needing a certain depth of cut, I will use, and even on my dado stack, I mean, I use these a lot. And I even use these when I'm marking my haunch tannins for like breadboard ends and stuff. It's a very, very good, good purchase. <clears throat> Some people don't like them. I use them all the time. Another thing that you may want to get if you don't have is a set of dividers. This one right here doubles as a compass. You can take one of the, the pins out and put a piece of lead in it and use it as a compass. But dividers, if you're wanting to set uh, or just draw a circle or if you're wanting to scribe the side of a cabinet or if you're wanting to gauge the distance between say your screws in your board and you want to put them say five inches apart you can you can mark it and just keep on going with it until you get your your screws out there and not just have them sporadic down through through there if you want to make make your screws look uniform a lot of different uses for uh, dividers laying out your dovetails uh, if you don't have a set I would suggest getting you a set and they don't really cost a whole lot of money you can pick these like this up at uh, usually where your stationery is at and most of your stores like uh, Staples and places like that <clears throat> and these you can get off of Amazon I'll see if I could find the link on these and include that in the description below now as far as marking I use several different things for marking now that's that's just me starting with what's called a lumber crayon and I use yellow because it will show up on most any species every species of wood that I have used walnut maple you know dark to light I've had absolutely no problem with seeing yellow on it so to me yellow is a good good uh, good sign. and I'll use that for uh, rough marking of course i'm marking oversize i'll use it for rough marking to cut out and break down my rough sawn lumber before milling it a carpenter's pencil and you can get these and the crayons at uh your big box stores but these have a big enough lead in them that when you uh are i have these all over my shop and i keep them at my joiner and my planers and even at the table saw and the, the miter saw and stuff, they're everywhere in here. And especially the, the joiner and the planers, because I will use these, that lead is thick enough that it will take the abusive scraping of it to mark squiggly lines all the way down one side in an a, in a edge of that board. That way when I'm running across, say, the joiner, I can tell when I've got it all, when I've covered all the surface and I've got it flat. So carpenter pencils are a good marking tool. A chalk pencil, and I have white because I work, work quite a bit with walnut. And especially when I'm wanting the camera, when I'm set up doing something and I'm wanting the camera to, for you guys to be able to see, cause just a regular lead pencil don't show up real well on camera. But this white wheel when I'm trying to explain something on how I'm doing, so I, I use it for that. And sometimes just for rough marks for myself on darker wood and also a regular pencil too. <clears throat> now, when I'm wanting to get real precise, or not real precise, but I'm wanting to get more precise, <clears throat> I use these grafting pencils. And I've got a 0 .3, 0 .4, 0 .5, 0 .7, and 0.9. And they all have different uses. Of course, this is a 0.5, and it's used the most with those Incra uh, T rules that I was showing earlier. The only one that will fit through those holes without breaking as easy when you're marking marking off so it gets used for that a lot <clears throat> the seven and, and nine i will use them here at the bench when i'm i'm rough marking something that i'm going to be cutting out maybe with a handsaw or something like that something that doesn't have to be so precise but needs to be closer than what this would do you know uh the three and the four fine joinery that three is so tiny and you can't put in pressure on it because you will break the lead and it makes such a fine faint mark that it's it's perfect for cutting to if you cut to to a pencil mark but now to cut when i'm doing precision cutting i'll use a marking knife when the precision matters and this one right here is a clark brothers wooden handle it's a hardened steel sharpens good lasts pretty good while and 
I'll leave a link for this one down in the, in the description also. But when you're wanting to, to cut to that fine line, a good square and a good marking knife is the only way to go. And I will also keep an assortment of uh, X-Acto knives on hand. And I use them a lot when I'm marking out for some joinery. Once I, I'll put tape on it and then I'll mark it out. Once I mark it out, then I'll cut it out with the X-Acto knife and have that tape as my line and actually I'm putting nothing on my wood that I have to, to sand off or anything. Or if I'm using uh, tape as trim where I'm going to be painting or gluing or anything like that and I need to trim some of it off to get it out of the way, I'll use those for that too. Wheeled style marking gauges, you can't, you can't hardly beat these things. The, the, the main thing that you want to look for in a marking gauge is that you've got a wheel that will sharpen. And you want, to, you want that screw to go down far enough that it will keep that wheel from turning. You want that wheel to actually slide cutting those fibers. If it rolls, it's just going to mar up. It's not going to cut. But if that wheel is, that screw will tighten up on it enough that it will hold it, then it will cut it. Uh, the difference between these two is that one. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. That screw head sticks up above that. Where on this one, it don't. And it actually recesses down inside of that, that gauge. <clears throat> and what that will allow you to do is mark right straight flat to the end of it. Where on the other one, you can't. And you'll find a lot of applications where you'll need one that will that has that flat screw head on it so keep that in mind when you're you're shopping for a, a marking gauge because that that screw head sticking up out of that it will get in your way more often than not just rough cutting stuff down or making a mark that you're don't have to be that really that precise on these this one right here is fine this one is a uh shop box which is cheap probably 10 bucks for that one and this one is a mr pen pen and that one works real real well it's not a not a real expensive one either probably i'm gonna i'm gonna guess 15 to 20 bucks but it's it, it's a it's a decent knife another thing that you if you don't have you may want and this one right here has its flaws and I'll explain those to you. But it has a, uh, a marking pen on this side just for single marks. And you can get the full length of that, which is probably, I don't know, seven or eight inches. On the other side, it has mortising pens for marking your mortises. And the, the bad thing about this one is and I didn't realize it when I got it, and I don't even remember where I got it at. It gets used some, but hardly ever. More often than not, I'm using one of them others. But uh, when you're doing mortises, you have this little piece right here that slides that pin there in and out. Well, it also stops your fence from being able to go back without moving that. So if, you, for example, if you want to make a half inch mortise, but this right here is going to be as far away from the center or as far away from the edge of the board as you can get because of this. So keep that in mind when you buy one, you may want one that has a longer shaft on it to where you can actually, you know, if you wanted a half inch mortise, so three inches or so from the from the edge of your board, which would be here, you can't get that with this. You would have to flip it over and use this side and mark it twice. You have to set it up, mark it, set it up again, and mark it again because your fence won't go back without pulling your mortise pins apart. So keep keep that in mind when you're when you're looking for. Best thing to do with uh, for one of these, make it yourself and make it how you want it. It don't take that much skill, don't take that many tools, don't take that much time, and you can make it however you want it. Of course, measuring tapes, everybody's got tapes. I've got, there's tapes all over this place. I think every machine in here has one or two. But uh, if you're working on something, uh, I will give you just a little bit of advice on that. Of course, it's something that everybody probably already knows. 
if you've got a, a measuring tape at your table saw, make sure that if you're going to use that one on cutting lumber, that it also, uh, it, it has the same measurements on it. Make sure that it's uh, right with any other tapes that you're going to use in that same process. If, if one of them's off, then you've got, you could end up with some problems later on in your project. So make sure all your tapes is together. When you buy two or three tapes, if you do like me, you go in the store and you buy three or four tapes, take them home, pull them out, make sure all the numbers line up on them. If there's one of them that don't, take that now. You don't have to throw it away, pitch it to the side. You can, do, you can use it when you're rough cutting stuff. But as far, but mark it, mark it so you'll know. Rough cuts only or something, so you'll know. But anyway, that'll do it for this one. I hope that's beneficial to you, helpful. I will put links to everything that I can find. I may not be able to find all this, but I will put links to any and all that I can find in the description. Have a comment, leave a comment, need to ask a question, ask a question. I'll do my best to answer it if I can. And uh, don't forget to hit the su subscribe button. Like the video. Until next time, thanks for watching.